Start talking to people as you normally do. Be genuine, be natural. Don't come across like a salesperson. That's important. So most important thing what I learned is you're not selling something. It's not a sales pitch. You're just offering something that's very unique and it's institutional quality to ordinary folks. And I think once you understand that concept and you educate them on that principle, then they'll come invest with you. When I was working in New York City on Wall Street as a tax director, corporate tax director, um, I realized that I need to achieve financial freedom through something that I really love and have, I'm passionate about. And what I discovered was I was a, just like everyone else, bought a single family home. I bought some condos in New Jersey where I grew up. And I started building on Pana, but I realized that I could not leave my job, my nine to five job. And I needed some, some kind of vehicle, something to, um, to, to leave my job. And that, that's what I decided to research and go, go that route, basically. So, so you, you, you deal with so many people do, right? You, you read the Rich Dad, Poor Dad book and you're like, man, I got to buy a condo, right? I got to buy some real estate because yeah. that's how you do it, right? And you do this for a little while. You're like, daggone it. I, I can't get there right from here. And so you started researching and, and what did you come up with, right? Because uh, it's kind of a scary place outside of single family house investing. Why did you, how did you, how did you discover multifamily? Maybe what did you, what else did you look at? And why did you think that you could do it? Um, I, I felt that uh, since, because I, I, my mom told me that really, when I was very young, um, come be, being immigrated from America, learning English as a second language, saying that you, as long as you put your mind to it, where there's a will, there's a way. And I know I was struggling in English, struggling in, in reading, because it wasn't my first language. Um, and I worked really hard every single night, having extra tu tutors. I spent a lot of time, you know, understanding what, what, how to pronounce certain words. And over time, I mastered, I became, I got A's in my grade. And I realized that if I can apply that to real estate and you, should, you will succeed, uh, you know, no matter what. But, but yeah, I, I see this a lot because I'm too young. I'm too old. I, you know, I'm not this, I'm not that. And you could have just used that excuse and you decided, hey, I'm just going to work on my, in this case, English. And, uh, but still, you, maybe you struggled with that. How did you overcome some of those thoughts of, hey, I'm, I'm not good enough or I can't do that? I think um, for, for mine was I hired a mentor and Drew Whitson was my mentor. Um, and he kind of like, you know, helped me, you know, you know, give, give, give me confidence, give me the, um, the ability to go out and, and buy multifamily um, and uh, be able to, you know, instill confidence and uh, I can succeed and help me along on my journey, basically. Uh, yeah, that's right. So you, you, you signed up with one of our mentors who at this point owns like 3000 units or so, which is really, really cool. Now, why did you do that? In other words, I mean, he can't help you with, you know, your language barrier, perhaps. What, what, why did you do that? And, and in hindsight, how, what, what impact did that make on, on your investing? Yeah, that accelerated my timeline because without a mentor, I was kind of lost. I didn't know how to buy multifamily. It's sort of like a very large building. I was scared. I thought I'll make you know, major mistakes and to limit my mistakes, to minimize my mistakes, I hired a mentor for those reasons and to accelerate my learning path and growth that I was desired to reach financial freedom. Yeah. So Jonathan, were there any specific moments where working with Drew and I'm, Drew's a, a close friend of mine as well, a great guy. Um, any, any moments where you were like, thank God I had that, that right there, that was a pivotal moment for me. And I don't know if I could have navigated that, that in that way. Was there any, and you looking back at it, you're like, that made all the difference in the world. Anything you can share with us on that side? Uh, yeah, I'll share with the audience that um, it's, it's when you're at a critical moment, like sort of a midlife crisis where I was at, where I was kind of fed up my job. I wasn't happy with the, the commute, you know, suburbs was crowded and I wanted financial freedom for my family, build a legacy. And I read Rich Dad Poor Dad, the purple book that everyone read. It kind of, and I love real estate. So I decided to um, join the mentorship program that Michael Blanc offered. It was a great program. And, um, and it, it taught me about syndication, which I didn't know, uh, raising money from other people, which I didn't know that. Uh, and I was initially scared, the thought, because, you know, I never raised money from other people. So um, you were scared, but you, over time, as you practice and you become more, more established, uh, it becomes like a, a second nature. Sure. Yeah. Did you, but did you, did you have any specific moments that hit where you're like, wow, he helped me navigate, he helped me write an offer that I would have never wrote. Uh, any, anything that stands out to you? Yeah. I think when I first um, brought a deal to him, uh, I was helping another student raise capital and close a deal in Atlanta, Georgia, 34 units, um, class B townhomes. 
and I helped raise capital. So I was very proud of myself doing that. And then I started submitting LOIs and the coach said, Hey, submit LOIs, practice, underwrite, you know, tons of deals. So I submitted LOIs and I had Drew look at this deal. Um, if it's a good deal, I'm gonna submit an LOI. And I submitted the LOI and Drew said, Okay, he liked it, he approved it. And that's how he got me on the momentum of, you know, sort of coaching me, reviewing my LOIs and, and those kind of moments where it kind of triggered you to take a, take massive action and um, have someone review it, make sure that it makes sense so that you don't make, you know, major mistakes. And that's how he, those ones helped me accelerate my, my path. Were you, were you uh, ever scared in the process? You're like, you know, that's really scary for me to take that step. And you were able to kind of overcome it having a mentor there by anything you can think of specifically we're like i don't know this seems like a little much for me knowing what i know yeah i i don't think it was the underwriting i was i was a uh, i'm a cpa i'm a tax account a tax director oh you killed the underwriting. underwriting that was that yeah. was done right yes yes so, so what my was part it was my part was the people person raising capital i think that's the the scariest part for me was be able to go to people and say, listen, I have a deal. Would you want to invest in my deal? And I was a little afraid of that because I've never done that before. Was it, and- was it maybe in your skill set or, or maybe what you're used to doing? You could bang the numbers out all day, which is super important in, in real estate in general. You need to be able to do that. But that other side, you, you were, that was totally uncomfortable to you. Yes. And yes. So how did he help you draw that out? Um, I, I read, I, I got Michael courses and Drew and basically you talk to everyone, tell them what you do and tell them what you know. So I'm a real estate investor. My name is Jonathan. Um, I, I, I you know, and we have deals offer, you know, and tell them, I told my family and friends first, my closest network. And then I just started building upon it and start using thought leadership platforms. Like, you know, I have my own podcast. I have other, um, you know, forums, social media that I build upon my, sort of my, my, uh, my thought leadership platform. Great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, so that's, just, that's tough though, because right, I mean, yeah, like it, it just overcoming your, you know, your kind of your anxiety to speak to other people. Right. And so, you know, that, I, I, I think I, I like you to talk a little bit more about that because there's a lot of people listening to it right now where I have the same thing. Like I'm more of an analytical numbers person and I'm a little more introverted. And just the idea of talking to other investors is like, man, I'm really uncomfortable with that. So what advice do you have you know, think back, you know, year or two when you're in that same position, how did you overcome that? I would say just start talking to people as you normally do. Be, be genuine, be natural. Um, don't come across like a salesperson. That's important. And it's not, you're not, so most important thing what I learned is you're not selling something. It's not a sales pitch. You're just offering something that's very uh, unique and it's institutional quality to ordinary folks. And I think once you understand that concept and you educate them, on that principle, then they'll come invest with you. It's just that they are afraid in the beginning. They never heard of it. They don't know how, it's, what is syndication and where does they put money in a deal until you educate them. It's an education process, basically. Let's talk about your first deal. Cause I think your first deal, you actually sold that one recently as well. So it's a super interesting deal, right? So talk about how you found it. Uh, sure, sure. This is a very uh, interesting story. So this is my first lead syndication deal. My first deal was in Atlanta, Georgia with Cheryl Gurvey. I helped her uh, on that deal. Um, but this this deal is my own deal where uh, I, I basically talked to many brokers, which I was instructed to talk to a lot of brokers, make phone calls and tell them I'm looking for apartment building. I look from at the time 50 units to maybe 60 units being my first deal. Um, and uh, he said, you know, what? I got two off market deals for you, Jonathan. He sent me he called me up that day. I was very excited. I was in Atlanta, Georgia. And then I said, you know what, uh, Chris, when I get home back to Dallas in Sunday night, I'll look at it and I'll let you know quickly. But I want to put an LOI or not. And I underwritten it. And then I spoke to Drew and said, you know what? This looks like a really good deal. It's, a, it's, in, a, it's in Oklahoma City. It's right on the, the highway. And it's a really good price point. It was like uh, $1.8 million for a 56 unit in an office. And I said, if I can get for that price point, I think we'll do very well in this, in this, in this apartment building. And so I submitted an LOI. And um, you know, luckily, the seller was accepted my offer. And we got that under contract. Basically. So you're skipping a few steps here, Jonathan. And one is, so you got this from a broker that you met in Atlanta? How did you take get him to take you seriously? I think I looked online. It was either um, LoopNet or one of these. I just kept calling brokers online in Google. And I just spoke to him on the phone one day after work. And I said, listen, I'm looking for this is my criteria. You know, class C, maybe 50 to 60 units, uh, value add, Oklahoma City. And he took me serious because I said, listen, in all my life, whatever I did, I, became, I, I was successful. 
I got my CPA license from right, state of New York. I have a master's degree in taxation, right? From a very good school. I'm the number one guy in the tax department, put to the CFO. I said, I know that if I could apply my disciplines in multifamily, I can buy from you many, many deals and, 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 and you can be rewarded for that. And he, he believed in me. And so he gave me a lot of off-market deals. And then that's how I got the trust from the broker.